Happy Halloween, AVP Wargamers. This is Jason coming to you with my top 10 Halloween games for this October. Number 10, Chupacabra. This is a quick, fast dice rolling game where you have to roll chickens, you have to roll goats, and the dreaded Chupacabra eyes. Now, the way this game plays is you're going to be rolling dice uh, along with your opponent, and every time you roll the red eyes, you're going to be taking dice away from your opponent. And the Chupacabra can eat ch two chicken dice at a time or one goat. So it's a race to eat the opponent's dice. It's pretty fun, pretty simple, all ages can play it. Chupacabra. Number nine, Lucidity. This is another dice rolling game where you take the form of a nightmare if you bust and collect the wrong amount of dreams. Um, I'm going to just say that this is a more complicated game. It's not for everybody, but it's a lot of resource management. And then eventually, if you can't defeat the nightmare, you become the nightmare. Number eight, Walking Dead, the board game. Now this is a pretty fun game. You can get a lot of players playing it. Uh, as you move across the map and achieve missions, you leave a trail of zombies behind you. Uh, you have to fight the zombies, you have to achieve the missions, and not die. It's a pretty fun game, fairly straightforward, fairly easy, but when you get a bunch of people, the board fills up with zombies pretty quick. And yeah, I really like this game. It's a lot of fun. They have uh, other versions of this too, where the, they have the prison, which is a, plays a little bit differently, but this is pretty fun because you get to explore the world of The Walking Dead as you run around achieving missions and defeating zombies. Number seven, Letters from Whitechapel. In this game, it's one player versus everybody else, where one player takes the form of Jack the Ripper, and each night, Jack the Ripper achieves his murders while the police try to chase him down. It's a pretty difficult game. Uh, it's not for everyone, but if you have a large group of friends, it's a really fun one person versus everybody as Jack the Ripper uh, stealthily sneaks across the city, getting away from the detectives, and the detectives scramble to try to catch him before he gets home. And again, uh, the each round takes the place of a night of the murder, and it, it, the, the tension racks up as Jack the Ripper uh, sneaks around you and gets around you, and you might catch him, or he might slip through your fingers. Number six, Nemesis. Nemesis is basically Alien, um, only done with not the commercial license for Alien, but it's very thematic of most space adventures where you will be dungeon crawling through a space station or a spaceship trying to get your way through and achieve your missions. When you play the game, uh, each player has their own secret mission that they have to achieve. It could be to screw over certain other players, or it could be to collect certain items or do certain things on the ship. Now, the ship has many, many things that could go wrong. Your engines could be busted. It could be going to the wrong planet. You could uh, catch on fire, or the whole ship burns down on fire, or the ship would just straight up break and explode. You can self set self-destruct mode. It's very thematic. Every time I've played, it's created an entirely new story, and it, again, it reminds me a lot like, like the movie Alien as you're playing it, but it's different every time. Nemesis also has many other expansions and new versions, such as Nemesis Lockdown, which is a really, really well-built game, and they also have different aliens that you can add to the game. Nemesis, one of my favorite games, but it is extremely difficult, and you're probably going to get destroyed before you can achieve your goal. Betrayal at House on the Hill. Now, even though I like Nemesis better than this game, this does fit the Halloween theme a lot better. Again, it's one player versus everybody. And in this game, you're going to be exploring a haunted house. 
but at some point there's going to be certain conditions that are met and one of the players and you don't know who it is yet but one of the players is going to become the bad guy and try to wipe out the other players now the really cool thing is it borrows ideas from like bram stoker's dracula frankenstein the creature alien invasions zombies monsters there's and endless possibilities in Betrayal and House on the Hill. Um, I'm currently 3D printing a lot of stuff to replace all the little tokens. And oh my gosh, it's got so many different themes to it. But it's pretty cool because once somebody's become the betrayer, the betrayer knows what they need to do and how they're going to win. And the players know how they're going to win, but neither team knows what's going on. Betrayal on House of the Hill is kind of broken, but it fits the Halloween theme really well. That's why I give it that spot. Number four, Ghostbusters, the board game. It's a cooperative game where you're going to be busting ghosts. Nothing says Halloween better than Ghostbusters, and this is a really fun game. You're going to be working together as a team to bust ghosts as they come out of the portals, and you're going to have to find ways to shut down those portals, stop the big bad ghosts, and achieve a win. Number three, Zombicide. Actually, any Zombicide is good. This is the second edition. Zombicide, you're going to have a team of players. You're going to be cooperating, working together, running around, fighting items, and trying to destroy hordes and hordes of zombies. Uh, cool Mini or Not is one of my favorite companies, and they have completely saturated the market with different Zombicide games with different themes. But Zombicide, doesn't matter which edition, what version. Zombicide is a really fun game, very easy to learn. Great for a big group of people, and if you like miniatures, you're going to get a ton of miniatures. Number two, Horrified. Horrified is a monster game. It's very thematic, perfect for Halloween. It's got all the Universal Studios monsters, the Wolfman, the Mummy, the Creature, the Invisible Man, you name it, it's in here. This game is really fun. It's cooperative. All the players are working together to defeat the monsters and save the survivors. And as you go through this game, you're going to find that it's a lot harder than it looks. Really fun game. I highly recommend it. And my number one pick this Halloween season is Psycho Killer. This is a very fun, fast-paced card game. It's really simple, really easy to learn. And basically, it's a deck reorganizing game. In this game, there are events. These events have to be played as soon as they're drawn. The rest of the cards are going to either be weapon cards or cards to help you rearrange the deck. In this game, you're going to be trading cards, giving cards, taking cards, moving cards around, sabotaging, setting traps, and eventually, once a psycho killer is drawn, all the weapon cards have to be played by your hand on yourself. These weapons count as damage, and that, that damage makes you lose the game. The person with the least amount of damage by the end of the game wins, and again, it's really fun because you're constantly going to be trading damage, trading cards, moving stuff around. It's crazy. It's a lot of fun. That's why I like it. Psycho Killer. Very fun, quick game, thematic for Halloween. And let's face it, when you're doing stuff for Halloween, you're probably going to be at a party or hanging out with friends. You're going to want something that plays pretty quick. And, and dirty and fun. It's something that me and my friends bring to all of our games, and it's a nice little pick-me-up game between other games, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Psycho Killer, my number one pick. Well, that concludes my top 10 games for Halloween. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like it, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.